One interesting thing that cuts across a lot of this, it's not just a planet coming, it's a populated planet. And the Anunnaki, who live on Nibiru, are the ones that brought civilization to Earth. You know, ancient astronauts, benevolent creatures from another world. Now, putting aside the gift of the Anunnaki, uh, you might ask how he knows that, uh, that, the, that Nibiru was real and that the ancient Sumerians um, believed this. And probably the strongest piece of evidence is this cylinder seal you see in the lower right. If you look up here, there's a symbol for a star. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten objects around it. He says this is evidence that the Sumerians knew that the sun was the center of the solar system, that the planets went around it, and there were ten planets, even though only five were visible in those days. That, by the way, is just a cylinder seal. This is what a real cylinder seal looks like. Uh, this is a second millennium B.C. cylinder seal. You roll it out on, on uh, wet clay and make an impression like that. problem with the Sumerians was that Although a lot of people say, oh, it was carved in stone by the Sumerians, they really didn't carve much stone. Most of their records are like the one on the upper right on clay tablets. Most of them have been translated by experts who say that Sitkin's translations are entirely wrong, that he is making it up rather than actually a scholar who knows the, ancient, the language of the ancient Sumerians. Then we have John Major Jenkins. He advertises himself as an independent researcher. Now, that's a cool name. You see that a lot on the Internet. That is what someone writes who doesn't have a degree, who has never taught at a university, who has no funding, who is probably unemployed, but is writing a website. You find lots of independent researchers on the, uh, the Internet. And he developed from his studies of the Mayans the idea that the Mayan calendar predicted doomsday in 2012. Now, this is not universally agreed. There are about three million Mayans still living in Guatemala and southern Mexico. And some people have gone and asked them. And they say, no, there's, there's no prediction for doomsday. But he thinks there is, and it's based on this, this calendar. Again, a very difficult item to, uh, to interpret. Uh, we know how the Mayans counted in, in day counts, uh, in patterns of 20. Uh, their calendar consisted of knowing how many days between this and this event. It didn't have months, it didn't have years, it didn't try to deal with that. It's very intricate, uh, but you add up enough cycles of days and something is supposed to happen in December 2012. Uh, it's not clear what, uh, nor since the Mayan civilization ceased about 500 years ago, what, what they were expecting to have happen now, but it's hardly the basis for fear of doomsday. Now let's come to a modern issue. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to criticize a fellow astronomer, Michio Kaku, who you've all seen on television, who does a lot of public talking. He's a very, uh, he's a very good talker. He's an expert on cosmology, string theory, theory uh, futurism. And he has been on the air a lot, warning us about the terrible solar storms that are going to happen once again on this magic date in December 2012. Now, I'm going to let you listen to him, but first I'm just going to point out a few problems. At one level, he's absolutely correct. Solar storms, outbursts from the sun, near peak solar activity, can fry the electronics of poorly constructed satellites in orbit. Uh, and today, satellites are mostly built to protect against that or to have uh, devices to turn them off when solar uh, radiation increases. But it's, it's, you know, you can't predict it very well. Uh, there may or may not be a big solar storm. But he has been quite specific. He says, at the moment of solar maximum, suddenly the solar magnetic field flips, which creates a shock wave, which spreads out through the solar system, eight minutes later encounters the Earth and destroys all our electronics. And I want you to hear him say it, because I couldn't have believed it until I saw this fox his interview. They could be bigger and more immediate than the threat of global warming, they say. Earth's magnetic field, which acts as our protective shield in space, has a hole in it. 
And that could put a lot of our earthly functions at risk. Dr. Michio Kaku, professor and author of the book Physics of the Impossible, is back with us. Professor, how are you? And good morning to you. Glad to be on the show. Uh, thanks. Twice in one week, man. It's bonus hour. Mm -hmm. What is this solar shield? Well, every 11 years, the sun has a temper tantrum. It releases a shock wave, a tsunami of radiation that could wipe out communication, weather satellites, GPS, uh, spy satellites, you name it, it's up there in outer Ooh, space. So, so you're saying that my BlackBerry won't work? The internet, box, television, uh, cable, satellite, TV, all of it could get wiped out around 2012. That's when we have the peak of the sunspot cycle. That's when the sun's magnetic field flips. North Pole and South Pole flip, releasing a shock wave of radiation, which will then hit the Earth minutes later, potentially wiping out a good chunk of our satellite communications. We're watching it very carefully now. Well, Doc, this happens how often, you say? Every 11 years. Well, However, why, why an 11-year cycle? It takes 11 years for the magnetic... Well, we don't need to go on except to mention that the interviewer asked him, well, what about 11 years ago in 2001? Why didn't we have these effects then? He said, we only had a handful of satellites in orbit then, so we weren't vulnerable the way we are now. Now, I have to admit that NASA also is a little bit at fault here. This is a 2006 uh, NASA news posting. I think it's still on the Internet. I know it is, uh, is constantly referred to. That's entitled Solar Storm Warning. And it was stated that we were going to have the possibility of the most severe solar storms in history uh, at the time of the next solar sunspot maximum in 2012. Again, yes, it's possible, uh, but it's not likely. And I think this, again, is, is it, taken by itself, it wouldn't matter. But it feeds into this fear, the fear-mongering about what's going to happen in 2012. Now, let me just give you a little lesson in solar physics. Um, one measure of solar activity is sunspot numbers. There are several others, but this is easy to interpret. Uh, when you have a lot of sunspots, you also have a lot of solar flares and coronal mass ejections, and that's what's called a solar maximum. And you can see there was a pretty high one uh, around 1991. There was another one about 2001, and the end... 11-year cycle would give you another one in 2012. And there were some reasons to think that was going to be higher than the previous one in 2001. But this is what the sunspots did. They were completely uncooperative. Just when, in about 2006, it should start going up again, they absolutely bottomed out. There were a couple of years without a single visible sunspot. Uh, and so one lesson is you can't predict the sun. And the other is, well, that most solar physicists are now saying is, well, probably the next sunspot maximum will be later than 2012, and it will probably be very weak. Now, that's not obvious from this, but it's simply saying that we cannot predict the sun accurately. We certainly can't predict individual flares. There will surely be some, but I hardly think they portend the end of the world. Well, Nibiru is probably the central player. What is Nibiru? Nibiru is an obscure god in the pantheon of a whole series of Mesopotamian civilizations. Sumer was the earliest. There then was a Babylonian period, finally going up to an Assyrian period. Uh, the name recurs several times. It's never featured. Uh, I don't even know if Nibiru is supposed to be male or female. Uh, it was uh, a consort of some sort of Marduk, but that doesn't tell you whether it was male or female. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's interchangeable with Marduk. And sometimes it's used to represent a place in the sky, like the, the culmination point of the ecliptic. I've read all this. I don't know. Uh, but there isn't much literature, in, and almost none of it from the time of the Sumerians. These are stories that are in the Babylonian literature, and you can find in the great libraries in Iraq. Uh, like the library of Asurbanipal. Uh, 